Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is your Faith Walk and Love Talk podcast with your sister, Gina Brooks. Oh, my God. I cannot believe all the, look, all these bills. Oh, my God. Con Ed, disconnection. NICOR, disconnection. Oh, who is this? The lawn and grass people. Oh my God, past due. Two months past due. Who is this one from? Oh Lord, bill after bill after bill after bill. It's so many of them. So many of them. This past due, this. Oh Lord, not the mortgage too. Three months. Oh my God. I think my head is going to explode. All these bills. Bills beyond bills beyond bills. Look, y'all, it's so very, very easy. I get it. To begin our days with complaints. I'm guilty too. So I get it. But if we started out, you ever thought about it? If we start our days by giving God our first fruit. If we start our days um, and began our mornings with prayer and praise. Have you ever thought about how the day would turn out if we started out the morning with worship? Look, I have not been one to like, you know, listen to the radio or keep up with the latest music and all this different type of stuff. But lately I have been um, playing worship music on overload 24 seven. I do not cut the radio off. I want to be bombarded and feel with worship and the praises of God. I go to sleep listening to it when I wake up. It's on. When I get my prayer in, it's on continuously. It's just, you know, the dial is down low to where it won't disturb me and where I can't be interrupted. But it's on, it's on, it's on. My kids have even asked me um, lately, Ma, you know, what? what is it with you and the music and the radio and you keep it on? All during the night. Look, I figure if look if kids can play to three, four, five o'clock in the morning, if you don't get them off them game systems, if folk can stay on Facebook and YouTube to three, four o'clock in the morning, they could be watching TV round the clock, wake up, you know, go to bed to the TV and wake up to the TV. Then why not the praise and the worship of God? Amen. Um, so I just I'm just trying to get us to understand. That if we tried something different, if we just try something different, right? Try Jesus. And I know we say it a lot and it's rehearsed to you over and over and over again. And I have to remind myself, I'm not some uh, miraculous creature that don't have bills to pay, uh, that don't get behind in my bills sometime or that don't have to be worried about the things in this life. I'm still in this life too. But if we could just focus on the goodness of God and look, there's a um, a choir song we used to sing. How you gonna pay your rent? Work it out all your money spent. Work it out a little bit to buy some food. Work it out, baby, need a pair of shoes. Work it out, telephone disconnect. Work it out, waiting on your next paycheck. I'm, look, forget about the, the skills on, on, on the time of rain, right? I'm just pr- trying to prove a point um, so that, you know, the, the skills and whatever the expertise didn't really matter. But understand my point. It's easy for us to sing songs and it's easy for us to say that we're going to wait on God. But when the lyrics to that song, how you going to pay your rent? When your rent or your mortgage is, is, is months, oh, will do, right? And and the money is not coming in like you need it to come in. All your money is spent, the other lyrics say. Um, you, got, you just got a little bit to buy some food. You pinch it from here, Robin Peter to pay Paul. Your baby need a pair of shoes and then some. Amen. So what about when those lyrics to the songs kick in and it becomes an actuality? And it becomes your reality. Can we still say we trust and depend on God to work it out? Well, we got to. 
we have to and like i said i know it ain't easy sometimes because this flesh honey this flesh kicks in before we even rise up in the morning this flesh is trying to beat us down before the bills start whipping on us amen so um the question is or the title should i say call me crazy but that's the title of today's lesson call me crazy but when i truly think on the goodness of jesus and all that he's done for me my soul forever cries out hallelujah that's when i truly think on the goodness of jesus because it's easy for us to say like i said and we can say that all the time and everybody easily rehearsing when i think on the goodness of jesus and the church go up in an uproar but when we truly think on the goodness of jesus when those times got hard it's easy to say when we think on the goodness of jesus and we ready to praise and shout hallelujah when those checks is coming in regularly when you got money sitting in the bank when your bills are current but what about when everything is past due and it feel like everything is collapsing on you i have to remind myself sometime to really really think on the goodness of jesus so i got on here to share this encouragement to you because sometimes we forget because the flesh be whipping us our mindset when the enemy get a hold of it with the thoughts it be whipping us and it tries to get the best of us and overwhelm us but when we truly think on the goodness of jesus we can actually scream out hallelujah so yes the encouragement is don't let the devil beat you down further with the woe is me paddle don't let him beat you no further with the woe is me stick so call me crazy but every time i get down to my lowest God always find a way to step in. He don't have to find a way. That's me trying to find a way. But God always manages to step in right on time. Every time I feel like I'm at my wits end and I'm going to be overwhelmed and be swallowed up by situations. Financially, God always find a way to come through. He always makes a way. He always opens a door. Not when I think he should. Catch that. It ain't always when we think he should. But guess what? It's always on time. The song goes on to say telephone disconnect, waiting on my next paycheck. God, I don't even have a paycheck uh, to wait for. What about those situations? When your husband's job ain't doing him right, ain't treating him like they ought to, and money is funny, and you ain't even got nothing really to contribute what about those situations what about the times when you yourself are searching for a job and the door has not been opened yet you have not found a job because um after surgery or after your ailment or after whatever it is that has transpired in your life you have to take on certain jobs and the situation is not like it used to be when you could just take on anything I remember a time when I was taking on any and everything. I've had all kind of jobs throughout my lifetime. I know a lot of y'all thought that I was just a stay-at-home mom for these 33 years of marriage, but I have not been. I have raised 12 human beings, praise and glory and honor be to God. But I have worked in the process. I have had many jobs. But now I find myself in a situation I have to work certain jobs. After I've had surgery four years ago almost four but yeah i would jump in anybody anyway you name it whatever it is i'm i'm in there i'm in there right as long as i work it around this kid's schedule i can work at night time because they got school during the day whatever it is i've always worked and i've um god, god has blessed me to do um a good job at it He's the one that held my body together. Many sleepless nights, many days after day after day without 
sleep. But God upholdeth me. So to those of you that have been there and are there in this present moment, I just came to encourage you. Look, call me crazy, but God always come through. No, ma'am. No, sir. We have to learn to fight and combat depression and oppression with praise, prayer, and the word of God. And sometimes, like I said, I'm just going to be honest and keep it 100. I got to reiterate that to myself. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh Praise, prayer, and the word of God. Because if we let the enemy beat us down, he's going to do exactly that and beat us to a pole. But no, we have to understand that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We can't beat the devil with money. We can't beat the devil with, with bullets and guns. I had that song used to go, We Seek the Armor of the Lord. Oh, my God. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. They are indeed mighty through God. What are some of those weapons? Prayer and praise. And the best and most effective weapon of all is the word of God. Yes, money answers all things that require money. So, yes, if, if we had um, money in the bank and, and savings and won the lottery or the lotto sometimes, you know what? And I'm going to be honest, I, you know, I get such a fluctuation of through my news feed and I don't know why. And that's probably the devil. I'm, I'm, <laughs> look, I'm saying it's the devil. Um, just trying to, you know how when, when a person is down and you just take your foot and you just grind on them and you just try to make it as, as bad as you can make them feel, you know, instead of helping them. That's the devil. Of course, we know he ain't going to help us. That ain't what he's here for. That ain't his job. But I'm just saying, it seemed like he gets you in the moments where you already feel like, you know, you hanging on by prayer, right? Thank God for prayer. But then he get those moments where he just feel like he put his foot on your neck and just try to twist and grind and just up. Try to take the or get the best of us. Amen. But yes, money. According to the word, money answers with all things. And I'm going to say that require money because it cannot buy love. It cannot buy peace, joy, healing, deliverance, salvation. Oh my God, the list goes on and on. It cannot buy those things. I don't care how much of it you have. You can not by the things that are necessary in life, the things that are most essential. I thank God, like I said, call me crazy, but the word of God has a way of uplifting us and setting us free, right? See, what I've come to understand is I, you know, I have my, my talks with God every day and I'm like, God, the enemy know that he can't get us all with the same things, right? So um, he tries different shoes because he knows what he can get to fit us. If he can't get me caught up in lust, if he can't get me uh, to cheat on my husband, if he can't get me uh, to lie and steal, um, then he'll try other things like working through my emotions, right? He'll try other things like um, binding me with anger, binding me with unforgiveness, or he'll try other things. This is this is for all of us. I'm just using me an example as an example, right? But he does this for all of us to get what he can that he feel like that he can use to break us, right? So if he can't get me with certain things, that he'll um, work against my finances. And I mean, he has been working over time, over time, over time, just trying to beat me to a bloody pole. Not just a pole, but a bloody pole. And I have been taking this thing to God in prayer because it's like, God, I, you know, I do honor and praise you. And I, I give glory and honor and praise to God for the time that I'm able to spend with him. Um, because when we do work, you know, you have to work around schedules. You have to work around at nine to five and it gets harder 
to stay in the clouds and it gets harder to fast and it gets harder because you got to work around all these situations, right? Um, but so I'm thankful to God for, for uh, the spiritual aspect of uh, not being connected to a nine to five. I am, you know, probably TMI, too much information for y'all, right? But anyway, just, just being honest, uh, I am currently looking, but um, yeah. So that's neither here nor there. I'm thankful to God that every time it seems like the enemy is just going to bog me down or overwhelm me with stuff, God reminds me and he brings me back to the scripture, right? And in reading the scripture, I'm saying this to share with somebody. This is what you need. Don't let the devil beat you down. I don't care if it is your finances. Don't let him get you depressed. Don't let him get you looking at it and counting the pennies down to the wire and Oh my God, I don't see how this is going to happen. I don't see how that is going to happen. God always come through. I am a woman of 12 children. My children have never gone lacking. And y'all can call it boasting, bragging, whatever, because some folk think um, I have or we have. But I'm thankful to God that God has kept our children fed, clothed, you name it, he has kept he has kept our utility zone, he keeps our um rent paid, uh mortgage paid, he keeps you know, like I said, the lights on, he keeps food in the pantry, and it may not always be what our hearts desire, just like a lot of you. It's not gonna always be, you know, shrimp and uh lobster in the freezer, right? But if it's a box of macaroni downstairs and if it's a couple of pork chops in there. Baby, be thankful and bless God. That's where I am. I didn't come, um, I wasn't born with a with a silver spoon in my mouth, no way. So I know what hard times look like. I know what hard times feel like. I've been there. I grew up in it. I've shared with y'all before. Um, look, pork and bean and hot dog, a lot of people are disgusted by the day. I thank God for it because that's the way we came. We had them a many days ravioli had them a many days and it wasn't because um my parents weren't working to provide a means they were it was nine of us it was a lot of us you know but the struggle was real but guess what god kept us god took care of us my mom's trust was in god my dad wasn't a church goer but my mom always upheld him and the family, the entire family, the household, in prayer. And I thank God for it. It, it built our trust, our belief as children, watching her laid out before God, watching her trusting God, watching her fast and pray all the time. Yes, I had a grandmother who did it as well, but we didn't see her as often when we went to church. We didn't see her as often as we saw my mom, not taking no credit whatsoever from her because she put it in my mom. The example had to be there for my mom to see it first. But I'm thankful to God that it was passed on and it was put in me that I could pass it on to my children. I don't get on here to boast and to brag about nothing whatsoever but the glory of God. It's all him. Please don't misunderstand me because it, it, it seemed like some sometimes you could share the goodness of God with folk or you could share uh, the blessings of God and folk get offended. And you sharing your testimony, folk get uh, intimidated or whatever the word is. And you just sharing your testimony. I'm thankful to God. I did come a hard way. Even after getting married, I came the hard way. When we got married, a lot of folk, and I'm sharing this story, this was for another lesson, but a lot of folk try to have all their ducks lined up in a row even before they get married. That ain't the way God brought me. When we got married, neither one of us, neither one of us at the time was working. That's a story for another day. It's another lesson. I'm going to tell you what God did. I'm going to share it with you. I am going to share it with you. So you know it had to be for love because one, no money involved. Amen, Jesus. But anyway, I came to encourage you. 
And I am going to get to the depths of that and share it in one of the lessons and, and tell you how greatly God blessed us. But Psalms 103, I want to share that with you on today. He knows my name. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He knows my name. And oh, how he walks with me. I got to be reminded. Sometimes we just got to be reminded. And oh, how he talks with me. You too. And oh, how he tells me. I know he's talking to you too. That we are his own. He knows our name. Oh my God. Just thinking on him. The tears is trying to well up in my eyes and I'm trying to hold it together. We're going to get through this lesson, y'all. Psalm 103, because I'm going to cut that song right there where it is. I know where it's trying to go, but we're going to get through this lesson today. I thank God that he knows our name. He knows what we're going through. He knows the traps that have been set by the enemy to catch us up. He knows. Please trust and understand. Trust and believe that God knows what we're going through. It don't matter what it is. Right? Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. There are so many benefits in serving the one and only holy, true, and living God. Why? Because look, when we get to our wit's end and we cannot make ends meet, God goes above and beyond us and he make the ends meet. I've seen it over and over and over and over again. He's done it time and time and time again. And look, being a family of 14, you know God had to be in the midst, especially in this day and time. If anybody that, look, anybody that's shocked, Anybody that do grocery shopping, you know where I'm coming from. Food is not playing with us in this day and time. But neither is God. We can trust him that in the middle of a desert, he going to provide a ram. In the middle of a dry place, he's going to provide water. He provides manna from heaven. Whatever the need be, when we are in need of strength, God provides strength. That's what we're in need of. That's what I found myself in need of. Amen. And from time to time, look, I had to tap back into, I had to go back to the well, that well of living waters. Got to go back to the well and dip again. Why? Because if we do not depend and trust in the well of living water, Jesus is that living water, then we're going to always fall short. Sometimes we just have to be reminded. Amen. So forget not all his benefits. There are benefits in serving the Lord that you won't find in nothing else in life. Serving the Lord will pay all after a while. Who forgiveth, verse 3, Psalm 103, verse 3, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Thank you, Lord. Who healeth all thy diseases to the cancer patient, to the diabetic, to the um, look, pancreatic disease, gastrointestinal disease, whatever it is. It says, who healeth all thy diseases. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, who healeth 
all thy diseases. Cancer is not too great. AIDS is not too great. HIV is not too great for him to heal. Diabetes is not too great for him to heal. I was diagnosed with cancer, and I've shared this testimony before. Before, when I was um, I was pregnant with my firstborn daughter. She's the third of my children. Um, and the doctors insisted I needed to sign for an emergency surgery so they could remove the baby because they said where the cancer was located, um, if I tried to have the baby, that both of us would lose our lives. But praise glory and honor be to our God the one and only holy, true, and living God. Yes, 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 God, I magnify you. My daughter is 30 years old today. I never took that surgery, but the prayers of the righteous availed much. Pastor Thomas prayed for me. She didn't even lay hands on me. She said, okay, after I told her what I was dealing with, she said, I'm going to pray. I took a word for it. I knew she was a woman of God. I trusted her word and that she would pray and I prayed as well and put my trust in God. The only holy, true, and living God. I got to stress that because folks, folks out here serving all kind of gods but they ain't holy and they ain't true, true and they don't live but that our God lives. My daughter is 30 years old and healthy on today, and so am I. But oh, I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had, look, who healed all thy diseases. I've been there. I've not only had cancer, but the ER, the surgery that um the time I ended up in the ER just a few years ago. They told me I had gastrointestinal disease. And not only that, it got so bad that it ate a hole through my stomach. When I passed out in my bedroom floor, I felt, all I could explain it was, I felt like a volcanic heat just burning up my insides, like it was just traveling through every part of my body. But they said that was because my stomach acids were spilling out through that hole and trying to they were traveling through my blood stream. I just felt like I was on fire all over the place. I could not speak, could not move, passed out in my floor. But God, God is the reason why I'm still here. Even when the doctors operated on me and tried to do whatever they could, thank God for their wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, but God had to intervene. Even in that, God had to intercede for me. The doctors themselves told me, oh my God, when I came back in there for a checkup, let me just look at you. We thought we had lost you. You had died and we were trying our best to bring you back. We thought you were gone. But oh, in the midst of it all, when they thought I was gone, when they had given up, and thought it was over, God said, wake up, my child. It ain't your time yet. You think I can't glorify God, and that's why the enemy always trying to get in God's business, because he don't want us to think on the goodness of God and to remember and to trust God and remember the things that he's brought us through. Verse 4, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Is that not what I was just telling y'all about? The enemy tried to kill me in the ER, but it was God who redeemed my life from destruction. I trust him. Yes, Satan, even with my finances, I trust him. Who crowned, verse four goes on to say, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. God, yes, you do. And we magnify you for it. Who satisfied thy mouth with good things. Share the testimonies of what God has done for you. Don't hide them. Don't let the enemy seal your lips. 
share with others of the things that God have brought you out of or the things that God have delivered you from so that they would know that they too can trust God and take them at his word. It's not a fairy tale, people. This is more real than we are. The word of God is more real than we ourselves are. Pinch yourself. Now to you, that's real. The word of God is realer, is realer than that. It's more real. Yes, I said realer. It's more real than that. Verse 5, who satisfied thy mouth with good things. That's what our testimonies are. Good things of the goodness of the Lord. So that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Testify of the good things of the glory of God. So that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Look, it ain't talking about this right here. This stuff that we look at in the mirror. It talks about the spirit. It's talking about the spirit being uplifted. It's talking about the joy of the Lord. But look, because God's word is multifaceted, it touches the spiritual aspect of us as well as the natural aspect of us. So yes, it can renew our youth like the eagles in the physical aspect, but in the spiritual aspect as well, which is much more important. Because we want the inner man to be renewed like the eagles. Amen. We want our faith to mount up on eagle wings. Look, sometimes we get in those situations we think our, our faith. No, faith, you ain't going to fail me now. Somebody used to say, feet don't fail me now. Faith, you ain't going to fail me now. God has been too good. He's done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. So I'm going to take that little bit of mustard seed. I may not have as much faith as some of you. I'm going to take my mustard seed and use it and magnify God. Why? Because verse 6 says, the Lord, all caps, executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Let me say that again. That's talking to me. I pray that it's speaking to you this, this morning. The Lord executed the righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Actually, I stand correct. This is this, this evening. Y'all know it don't get, you know, doctor really late. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. That ain't even important. It's morning in my life right now because the joy of the Lord is upon me. And I pray to God it's upon you too. Verse 6, the Lord executed the righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Are you feeling oppressed this evening? Are you feeling depressed? Don't let the enemy get the best of you. Prayer and praise is the ultimate weapon. And how do we get there? Through the word of God. Verse 7, he made known his ways unto Moses his acts unto the children of Israel. He's done all these things, but don't think he's overlooking us. He's not going to pass us by. Do not pass me by. Do not pass me by. Do not pass me by. While on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by. Hallelujah, Jesus. Verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger. Aren't you glad he's slow to anger? That's why a lot of us are still here. I know that's why I'm still here. Because God is slow to anger. I've had some foolish, stubborn ways throughout my lifetime. But I'm still here because God decided to use me for his glory. He looked at a wretch undone like me and said, you know what? If you can be that stubborn and set in your own ways, I can use that stubbornness and fight against the enemy with it. And praise and glory and honor be to God that that's what I'm trying to do. Whatever the Lord gives me to do. 
It's look, it's a battle against this flesh. This flesh teams up with the devil against us. But we got to buckle down and buckle our seatbelt and strap ourselves in and say, God, I'm in this for the long haul. I am in this to win it. Amen. And with Christ Jesus, we shall win. Why? Because we are focused on the mark of the prize of a higher calling, which is Christ Jesus. Jesus, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Oh, my God. Thank you for your mercy, for your mercy endured forever. Thank you, God. Thank you that you are slow to anger. God, you got more patience with us than we got with ourselves. You got more patience with us than we got with each other. And I thank you that you are slow to anger. Amen. Verse nine. He will not always chide. Chide is to punish and, and, and to um, rebuke. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. Neither will he hold back his anger forever. We have an opportunity. I tell you, every time we come together, we got a golden, gracious, glorious opportunity. Mercy and grace. A banquet of mercy laid out before us. The opportunity is now to feed from that mercy. To use that mercy while the opportunity is being presented. But if we keep turning a blind eye to it. And we keep ignoring the call of God. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? Who knows if we will have that same opportunity on tomorrow? Who knows? We don't know what tomorrow brings. It's God who holds our tomorrow. Amen. So I encourage you. I encourage you to repent now. I encourage you to forgive now. I encourage you to lay out your sins before the throne of grace now. I encourage you to stop and turn away from your evil and wicked ways now. Who knows what your tomorrow will bring? Tomorrow we could all be very well standing in the judgment. Standing in the judgment, about to be tried. Lord, look at your people, oh Lord. Look at your people, oh Lord. Look at your people, standing in the judgment. About to be tried. Don't wait until it is said too late. Verse 10. He has not dealt with us after our sins. In other words, he has not dealt with us as our sins deserve. Y'all know it's true. I can attest to that myself. God has not dealt with me according to what my sins deserve. If that was so, a lot of us would not be here. I told you when we first started the lesson. I would have been dead and in my grave. But God made old death behave. Why? Because he is merciful. Verse 10 reminds us, he has not dealt with us after our sins. God has not dealt with you according to your sins. You know he hasn't. Why? Because you're still walking in your own way right now. He has not dealt with you according to what your sins deserve. He has not. Why? Because he loves you and he's extending an opportunity to repent of your sins and get it right. Get right, church, and let's go home. Oh, my God. Nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, neither has he rewarded us according to our iniquities. Oh, my God. Who would not serve a God? like God, who will not serve a God like the God of all this earth, who will not serve a God that continuously hands us a platter of grace and mercy every day. It's brand new mercy. It ain't recycled. It ain't reused. Brand new mercies every day. He knew we would need it. Why? Because of this flesh that we walk in. 
and our flesh is full of stubbornness, wickedness, and evil. But God knows how to tame our flesh. Look at somebody and tell them, God knows how to tame that flesh, honey. We don't know what to do with it, but God knows how to tame it. 11 says, for as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. It is imperative that we fear God in this hour. It is imperative that we fear God. Why? Because we all belong to God, whether we serve him or not. This body is going to return to the dust whenever God say so. And our spirit is going to stand before God. You know why all this, this flesh be bucking to get us in trouble? This flesh is always wilding out and bucking to get us in trouble. Why? Because it ain't going to stand before God. This flesh is going to turn back to the dust. The Bible tells us the flesh is going to return right back to the dust. It don't have to stand before the fiery eyes of God to be judged. Our soul, our spirit, our soul, the inner man, has to answer for the things that we've done in this life. The inner man is what is going to stand before God. Our soul is getting us in all this trouble, and it ain't got to stand before the fiery eyes of God. Our flesh, our flesh is returning back to the dust and always trying to get us in trouble. Our flesh, our flesh, our flesh is wicked. It is an enemy to us and to God. Why? Because the Bible tells us our flesh is prone to sin, which means our flesh is drawn to sin. And it tries to draw us to sin to keep us in trouble with God. It tries to draw us to sin and keep us separated from God. But 11 says, Psalm 103 and 11, For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those that fear him. Fear God, not man, because look, greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. I don't care if armies of all armies come against you. If you got God fighting for you, you are covered. Better than all state. Rest assured you are insured in God. And that's a guarantee you could take to the bank. Verse 12 says, as far as the east is from the west. I love how God covers all the marks. He didn't just say, you look, from one direction. As far as the heavens is from the earth. So the heavens and the earth, that's, that's north and south right there. But he took it a little step further. He said, as far as the east is from the west. So far hath he removed our transgressions from us. When God removes sin from us, as far as the east is from the west, baby, why are you reaching back for it? Let it go. Let me, let me read that again, verse 12, Psalm 103. As far as the east is from the west, I don't care how far in the distance we look and you know, from the east to the west. You can't see the end of it. It just goes on and on and on and on and on in that direction. But the word of God says, as far as the east is from the west, so far, this is the comparison he made, so far hath he removed our transgression from us. Why on earth will we be looking back? Why on earth would we want to go back into that filth and that mess and be entangled and be made filthy all over again? God, you removed it that far from me. I pray to God until you call me out of this life that it stays that far from me. Yes, the enemy going to come against us and try to trap us up. I'm not some superhuman being that he don't try to trap me up. But I fight with everything that God gives me. You got to use those weapons. I fight not to get caught up. Yes, I get angry sometimes. But the Bible says, get angry, but sin not. Sin not. God knew we was going to get angry, but sin not. So I don't get angry and cuss. I don't get angry and, 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 and you know wish hurt and harm on people. I don't get angry, it's not talking foolish. 
But I, yeah, sometimes this old wicked flesh, man too, sometimes it get puffed up. I immediately start praying. Most of the time. I'm going to keep it 100. Sometimes it tries to, you know, the thoughts, it tries to work on you, it tries to linger. And it's a fight for real. I'm telling you what God loves, it's a fight for real. And I have to start talking because the enemy start talking to your mind. Uh-uh, God, you're not going to let this rest on me. You're not going to let this stay. I don't want it. I don't want it. It's not mine. And I talk with the strength of God until it's up off me, until I can just relax myself and pray for real. And I repent. We got to. We got to take our salvation seriously. The enemy take his warfare with us, against us, seriously. We got to take the fight back seriously. He ain't playing with us, and we can't afford to play with him. We have to be serious about our salvation. Verse 13, like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Oh, God, please teach us to fear you, to truly fear you, God, not what man can do to us. The fear of God is clean. The fear of God is wisdom. In the book of Revelation, it tells us, you can Google it if you like. Um, in the book of Revelation, it tells us that fear is a sin. It displeases God. Why? Because when we fear, and I mean ungodly fear, not the fear of God, it's two different kinds. So don't, don't misunderstand me. When we fear man and when we fear the things that man can do, it displeases God. It dishonors God. Because in a way, it, it devalues and disrespects God. And it kind of, you know, I don't even want to say it any further than that. But it kind of, you know, tries to take away from his power, tries to lessen. No, 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 his authority. I can't do that. But the fear of God is pure wisdom. That is the only one we should be fearing. His power is the only power we should be feeling, not the government or fearing, rather. But his authority. Why? Because God overrides the government. When Jesus came into the earth, what did the word of God say? Did the government rest on his shoulders? God overrides the government. Everybody that's put in charge, whoever it is, whether we vote or not, if we never vote, if none of us ever vote, God allows things. And sometimes he allows things, these dictators and what have you, he allows things just because we hard-headed and stubborn and foolish. Just because we try to take matters into our own hands and we try to play God. He allows things to get our attention. Go back and read about the children of Israel. There are many instances, many examples where God shares with us about the things that he allowed. Hello. Including bondage. Because of their dishonor for God because of their disrespect to his name. Verse 13, like as a father pitieth his children. Thank you, Father God. So the Lord pitieth them that fear him, for he knoweth our frame. The Lord knows name by name. He knows my name. He knows yours too. And I don't care how many genes are in the earth. It could be, you know, a million of them birth right now today. He ain't going to get us mixed up. Why? Because he knows the hair, the very strands of hair upon our head. He knows the number of the hairs upon our head. Verse 14, for he knoweth our frame and he, he remembereth that we are dust. What did I tell you about this frame? This flesh right here going to return back to the dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. It's for, but it, look, it's just a season. The Bible telling us right here in verse 14. As for man, we don't get but a season. We are just as the grass and the flower of the field. They get a season to flourish, and then what happens? They die. So is man. We ain't nothing but a plant. 
we are plants as well. Whether you choose to be a plant of righteousness or not, you're still a plant. And just like the grass, which is planted, just like flowers of the field that is planted, they flourish for a season and they die. And we are the same. We will flourish for a season and then we'll die. 16 says, for the wind passeth over it and it is gone. Just like that, it's gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. Verse 17, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. Everybody always want to talk about how the mercy of God and do it forever. And it does, according to scripture, it says that. But you are, look, read the full context of the scripture. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. I didn't write the book. It was here when I got here. And his righteousness unto children's children. Like Pastor Thomas would oftentimes say, love my pastor. We didn't write the book. It was here before we got here. So yes, the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting, but upon them that fear him. He made it very, very plain. Now we can read that and take from it whatever we like. But the word of God is very clear. Verse 13 said, 18, to, to such as keep his covenant. Again, he's being specific. He's being specific. Specific. To such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. Not just to remember them, but to do them. Let's read verse 18 together. To such as keep his covenant. And to those that remember his commandments to do them. So you got to not only remember the commandments, but do them as well. Verse 19, the Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom ruleth over all. So whoever y'all think it is in control down here, it ain't so. The Bible confirms the Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens. And his kingdom ruleth over all. So forget what you heard. You might have been confused by some uh, some other lesson or some other podcast or some other teaching or whatever it is. Some other book somebody passed along to you. Forget what you heard. God and God alone ruleth over all. 20 says, bless the Lord, ye his angels. This is him addressing everybody in the word of God. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. 21 says, bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts. See how you breaking it down? Level by level, precept upon precept. He don't leave a stone unturned. 21, bless ye the Lord, all ye hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure if you are not doing the will of god if you are not seeking to please god you are not his minister what are you ministering and the bible was specific also when it said ye ministers of his and why was it specific in that particular manner because satan also has ministers he does and the bible tells us that he also you know satan himself tries to portray himself as an angel of light but it's not it's an illumination right so look into that amen 22 closes out with bless the lord all his works in all places that includes you that includes all of us so after he got through breaking it down, he was saying, in other words, look, if you didn't fall in either one of these categories, if you're not an angel, if you're not a minister, if you feel like you're not one of the hosts, he said, look, I'm going to break it down in this fashion. 22 says, bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. And guess what? The Bible just confirmed that he ruleth in the heavens, verse 19. And his kingdom ruleth over all. So he ruleth the heavens and in the earth. 
He ruleth over everything he created. He is Lord of all. Bless the Lord, all his works. That included everybody from all walks of life, from, look, all your history, all your background, don't even matter. All his works. If you are living, breathing, moving, if you can inhale and exhale, you are part of God's creation. You are his works. You are the work of the potter. The potter wants to put you back together again. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. That's the last verse of Psalm 103. And I just wanted to get on here to remind you that in spite of what is going through in your life, always remember to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Oh my God. Thank you so much for joining in with me on tonight, on this evening, on this morning, wherever you are, when you get this um, this live and enjoy Jesus with me, just remember to always trust God, no matter what you're going through, if your bills are due, if they're late, if they're overdue, past due, whatever. Just remember, take a deep breath, focus. Because at those times when we're looking at our bills and we get all frustrated and discombobulated, look, we are not focused on the prize of the higher calling. Because if we were, we would be praising God. And we would be trusting him to come through as he always has. Amen. But when we're looking at our situation, we our eyes become dim, our, our focus become blurry. So I just got on here to remind you to focus and praise God in spite of. Amen. Praise ye the Lord for his mercy endure forever. Praise ye the Lord for his mercy endure forever. Praise ye the Lord for his mercy endure forever. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. And no, like I said, I didn't get on here to express my um, experience and skills on this tambourine. I just wanted some music and praise to praise our God. Amen. Father God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for bringing us together again. Thank you, God, for reminding us to praise God, no matter what we're going through, because only you can lift up a bow down head, only you can mend a broken heart, only you can lift our burdens, only you can remove our burdens, only you can carry us through the fire when we're being tried in the fire, God, and bring us forth as pure gold. God, we give you thanks, glory, honor, and praise for the reminders, God, from the book of Psalms, the 103rd chapter. Thank you for the word of God, God. Let it rest upon us, God. Let it take root in us, God, and remind us. Let it be stirred up in us to remind us to praise God no matter what. That in everything we should give thanks. Call me crazy, but God, I trust you. Call me crazy, but I'm dependent on you, Lord. Call me crazy, but I love you and I am leaning on you in Jesus' name. Call me crazy, but pray for me, and I will be praying for you. I have enjoyed this moment with you, and I pray that you have enjoyed your Faith Walk and Love Talk podcast with your sister, Gina Brooks. You all be blessed and have a glorious evening in God. Amen. See you next week.